Are we eating our way to extinction? According to the United Nations, the world will likely miss its target to limit a rise in global temperatures to 1.5 degrees Celsius, which would result in more severe environmental disasters. Even if we were to stop all fossil fuel emissions immediately, that goal would remain unattainable because of our food system, which is responsible for about a third of all human-caused greenhouse gas emissions. Some scientists say that avoiding meat and dairy is the single biggest way to reduce an individual's environmental impact on the planet, as animal-based foods create about twice the emissions as plant-based foods. Is changing our diets the answer to lowering emissions and diminishing fresh water availability? And what obstacles stand in the way? Joining me to help answer some of these questions is filmmaker Kip Anderson. He's the producer of 2014's Cowspiracy and this year's Seaspiracy. Kip, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. A recent headline by Time magazine claimed cows are the new coal. Of course, they were referring to methane emissions, which have a global warming potential of up to 80 times that of carbon dioxide over the short term. Uh, that sounds bad enough, but that's only part of the story. Could you explain how animal agriculture also contributes to global warming? Yeah, you have that issue with the methane, but the biggest issue is really land use. People have no idea to realize how much land is used to, uh, to grow the corn and soy to feed livestock. Uh, around up to 90% of corn and soy in the Amazon that's grown all goes to feed livestock. And so what you're doing is you're clearing away all these incredible carbon sinks, which are trees, nature's best carbon sinks, trees, and just destroying it. And then so that's the biggest issue is the land use, that all the forested land all around the world is getting destroyed. A, a recent report found that 20 livestock companies are responsible for more greenhouse gas emissions than either Germany, Britain, or France. Uh, from 2015 to 2020, global meat and dairy companies received more than $478 billion in backing, which the report says will lead to more meat production. Uh, with governments disinvested in the industry, is there any way to curb emissions? It's very difficult. It's a long-term partnership, so it's very difficult when you have such entrenched lobby groups. But the, but the thing is, like with everything, is just, you know, the people have to unite and to demand that we just really have to, to eliminate or reduce drastically these uh, ridiculous subsidies. Well, part of the challenge of resisting that, of course, is the lobbying, which you just talked about. Uh, we know that livestock groups have been lobbying the U.N. to support more meat and dairy production, uh, and U.S. meat and dairy uh, companies act collectively to oppose climate-based policies, which effectively would limit production, no? Um, some regularly fund, they publish, they promote research uh, and content that minimize the link between exactly what you're talking about, animal agriculture and climate change. They distort the picture. And as a result, it advances their agenda. Uh, in your view, how do you strategically and practically stop this level of lobbying? Well, it's very difficult. I mean, the, the biggest thing is stop the subsidies, where, whereas, the, you know, say fast food, for example, a Big Mac costs around 2 to $3. Without subsidies, it would be around 12 or $13. So if we're eliminating these subsidies, people will be le eating less of these horrible foods, especially red meat, as we well know, is uh, bad for the health overall. Walk me through really... this for a second, because this is an interesting proposition, right? You're saying we stop the subsidies, which effectively prices um, everyday working people, poor people, out of the fast food or bad food market. They, now the $12 Big Mac is out of their reach. Uh, we're effectively forcing their hands to eat better, in your estimation. But isn't it possible, though, that people who are already food insecure would not eat better food? They would just eat different bad food. They would eat whatever is accessible to them, and we'd be taking away one other option from them. And that's at least one counter-argument that people would make. Yeah, so a lot of it is education, you know, and we have in one of our films, uh, What the Health, we show it's called Plant Based on a Budget, where you can eat up to a week for a family of four for only $25 if you're getting bulk, um, you know, bulk beans and rice and vegetables from a, from a large produce place. You can eat very cheaply, so it's a misnomer that, that it's expensive to eat plant-based. It's actually quite a lot cheaper. Uh, studies estimate that it takes about 18,000 liters of water to produce a kilogram of beef and about 25 liters uh, for a single burger. Uh, by comparison, an eight-minute shower uses up about 76 liters of water. Uh, in terms of personal efforts with regard to water conservation, are we doing this the right way? 
Uh, that's the thing is in Cowspiracy, we have a great, uh, in, the film starts out with that, is that when, when one, the equivalent of eating one hamburger is the equivalent of showering for around two months. So it's just the most absolute inefficient system that you could possibly devise. So we just have to cut that middleman out and eat these healthy, whole food, plant-based things that our body was intended to, um, you know, a majority, if not completely. Uh, according to the UN, the largest share of the world's uh, water consumption, that's about 69%, uh, is from animal agriculture. Uh, documents released by WikiLeaks show that as far back as 2019, Nestle was warning U.S. officials uh, that the world was on track to run out of fresh water by the year 2050, in part due to growing meat consumption. Now, the OECD estimates that by the end of this year, the U.S. could consume over 33 billion kilograms of meat products. Uh, when you consider the global impact of eating meat on water supply, uh, should we be talking about this in terms of policy? Is, is, the, is the individual dietary decision conversation almost beside the point? Yeah, we hear about climate wars and climate change all the time. But what we really have to talk about, too, is, is imagine if water goes out, we're going to have water wars. And that is extreme. We can't live without water within 24, 48 hours. Climate change is this gradual thing that we can have these technologies that we can combat them. But we want to run out of fresh water. Now we're talking about serious, serious uh, uh, atrocity that that is so scary to even talk about. The water wars and water change and the, the, the water shortage is a very, very urgent. And again, it all comes back to, yeah, our choice of eating animals, raising and killing animals. So if we want to align ourselves with these missions, the first thing we have to do is look in the mirror and say, what can I do? Well, the first thing, I can stop eating animals. The eating of animals has been framed as an ethical and moral issue from people who talk about the value and sanctity of the animal's life and the harm that comes to the animal uh, when it is killed uh, or, or prepared, raised for, for killing, even. But you seem to be also raising an, an ethical and moral issue around eating animals because of the environmental impact. Is that a political message that would be effective in terms of getting people to stop eating animals? Yeah, that's the interesting thing about eating animals. Raising and killing animals, it, it goes on so many different levels. One is we know it's but thousands of studies. It's not good for your health, eating a lot of meat and dairy. Um, but then you also have this environmental impact. But then you also have an emotional, uh, a social, spiritual impact. The, something that aligns with your ethics. You know, when you look at an eight-year-old kid, they would never they would never kill an animal and want to eat it. If they know what they're eating, they wouldn't want to kill it. So it's also this domino effect of when you align your ethics with what you're doing in all respect, whether it's in the environment and also it's how we treat others, that trickle effects of how we treat animals, trickle effects also dominoes into how do we treat each other as human beings. So it's the golden rule, and the golden rule needs to apply and extend to not just humans but to animals. And I think that's the biggest thing that's been missing um, that will just be radical transformation for everything from social justice issues to environmental issues. Uh, the UN reported that a tenth of the world's population was undernourished in 2020. Uh, at the same time, a significant amount of the crops that are consumed are fed to animals, not people. Uh, for example, only 6 percent of soybeans are fed to people, while 70 to 75 percent end up in animal feed. Are crops going to animals to feed people in wealthy countries at the expense of starving people in poorer nations? Yeah, there's a study done that if um, everyone went vegetarian, everyone went vegan, there's enough food to feed around 14 plus 14 billion people, almost twice, nearly twice as many people. People talk about we have these population control issues, but as far as food, it can feed around 14 billion people. But the way we're consuming uh, meat and dairy, we need three to four more planets. That's how much land use um, and water use it's, it's needed to, to consume the amount of meat and dairy. So um, just by eliminating this meat and dairy, we're going to be able to feed the entire planet, you know, two times over when done in the right way. This is a, a practical matter. Is there any way to save the planet without the overwhelming majority of people becoming vegan? There, I mean, it sounds pretty extreme, but there's really not. I mean, you can do anything like you mentioned at the beginning. Do everything we can with, say, no one drove cars, and everyone had, everything was solar panel. We did nothing that. We still have forested land, especially around the rainforest, completely destroyed to animal agriculture. Our water is depleted. Raising just a few animals, cows, pigs, and chickens, take up the majority of everything. So it's just becoming this whole globe 
Um, it's just being depleted of its sources, being sucked dry because we're uh, feeding and killing 70 billion animals for food and trillions of animals for fish that you see in sea spiracy. And that's the most important thing when we're talking about climate change. We have to talk about the ocean because that's where the biggest uh, carbon sink is from, is from um, these kelp forests. And we're clearing those out at an astonishing rate. And that's a, a massive reason for climate change. All right. Kip Anderson, thank you so much for joining me on Upfront. Everybody, that is our show, and that's it for the season of Upfront. Thank you for watching. Upfront, we'll be back in the new year.